and you're really feeling deeply this penetrative feeling that just is connected at the very fiber of your being all of your cells you're just really connected to this state of feeling this conception of yourself to be true there is a virtue that goes out this is that discharge it's like an energetic or ethereal orgasm and that is what is the planting of the seed Welcome back to another episode of Daily Neville. I am your host, Josiah Brandt. Daily Neville is all about breaking down the teachings of Neville Goddard, making them easy to understand, easy to digest, easy to apply in 20 minutes or less. I designed Daily Neville to fit seamlessly into your daily diet of high vibe consciousness nutrition. And I encourage you to come back every single day as we go deep into these ideas and feed them into our awareness that we may grow and transcend to our highest potential of expression. Today, we are continuing with Neville's famous book, Your Faith is Your Fortune, and this is the chapter titled Crucifixion and Resurrection. Let's go ahead and dive right in. John eleven twenty five, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Neville writes, The mystery of the crucifixion and the resurrection is so interwoven that to be fully understood, the two must be explained together, for one determines the other. This mystery is symbolized on earth in the rituals of Good Friday and Easter. You have observed that the anniversary of this cosmic event, announced every year by the church, is not a fixed date, as are other anniversaries marking births and deaths but that this day changes from year to year, falling anywhere from the 22nd day of March to the 25th day of April. The day of resurrection is determined in this manner. The first Sunday after the full moon in Aries is celebrated as Easter. Aries begins on the 21st day of March and ends approximately on the 19th day of April. The sun's entry into Aries marks the beginning of spring, the moon, in its monthly transit around the Earth, will form sometime between March 21st and April 25th in opposition to the sun. This opposition is called a full moon. The first Sunday after this phenomenon of the heavens occurs is celebrated as Easter. The Friday preceding this day is observed as Good Friday. This movable date should tell the observant one to look for some interpretation other than the one commonly accepted. These days do not mark the anniversaries of the death and resurrection of an individual who lived on earth. Seen from the earth, the sun in its northern passage appears at the spring season of the year to cross the imaginary line man calls the equator. So it is said by the mystic to be crossified or crucified, that man might live. It is significant that soon after this event takes place, all nature begins to rise, or resurrect itself, from long winter's sleep. Therefore, it may be concluded that this disturbance of nature th at this season of the year is due directly to this crossing. Thus, it is believed that the sun must shed its blood on the Passover. If these days marked the death and resurrection of a man, they would be fixed, so that they would fall on the same date every year, as all other historical events are fixed. But obviously, this is not the case. These dates were not intended to mark the anniversaries of the death and resurrection of Jesus, the man. The scriptures are psychological dramas, and will reveal their meaning only as they are interpreted psychologically. These dates are adjusted to coincide with the cosmic change which occurs at this time of the year, marking the death of the old year and the beginning or resurrecting of the new year, or spring. These dates do symbolize the death and resurrection of the Lord, but this Lord is not a man. It is your awareness of being. It is recorded that he gave his life that you might live. I am come, 
that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Consciousness slays itself by detaching itself from that which it is conscious of being so that it may live to that which it desires to be. Spring is the time of year when millions of seeds, which all winter lay buried in the ground, suddenly spring into visibility that man might live. And because the mystical drama of the crucifixion and resurrection is in the nature of this yearly change, it is celebrated at this springtime of the year. But actually, it is taking place every moment of time. The being who is crucified is your awareness of being. The cross is your conception of yourself. The resurrection is the lifting into visibility of this conception of yourself. All right, now this is definitely a very different interpretation than that which is taught to the masses. The masses celebrate this as the death and resurrection of a man who lived many thousands of years ago and who was hailed as the hope or savior of humanity. And all of Christendom is expecting this man, this physical earthly man, who died thousands of years ago and resurrected, to come again, to return. And this is known as the rapture or the return of Jesus Christ. And this is absolutely the case. Jesus does come again, but not in the way that the world expects. Jesus comes individually to each and every one of us and is resurrected in each and every one of us individually as a state. The state of being that is Jesus Christ is resurrected in each one of us individually. And this is the return or resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, this is one of the states that we can resurrect and wear in our awareness of being. And there are many other states that we can wear in our awareness of being as well. The awareness of being wears garments, and those garments are hardened into form and flesh. Awareness of being, whatever we're aware of being, we wear that like a costume, and then the world is our mirror. And then we check ourselves out in the mirror of our world, and we see the state that we're in, and we either rejoice in it, or we decide to die to that state, meaning to peel off that garment and put on something new that we will rejoice in. And of course, to follow this analogy that I'm giving you in this moment, the ultimate state of being that we can wear is the state of Jesus Christ. Far from being a day of mourning, Neville writes, Good Friday should be a day of rejoicing, for there can be no resurrection or expression unless there is first a crucifixion or impression. The thing to be resurrected in your case is that which you desire to be. To do this, you must feel yourself to be the thing desired. You must feel as individually true for yourself. I am the resurrection and the life of my desire. I invite you to repeat after me. I am the resurrection and the life of my desire. Feel these words to be true. I am the resurrection and the life of my desire. I am, your awareness of being, is the power, resurrecting and making alive, that which in your awareness you desire to be. Two shall agree on touching anything, and I shall establish it on earth. The two agreeing in this verse are you, your consciousness, the consciousness that is desiring, and the thing desired. When this agreement between your consciousness desiring and the thing desired is attained, the crucifixion is completed. Two have crossed or crossified each other. I am and that, consciousness and that which you are conscious of being, have joined and are one. I am now nailed or fixed in the belief that I am this fusion. Jesus, or I am, is nailed upon the cross of that, your conception of yourself, your desire. The nail that binds you upon that cross 
is the nail of feeling. The feeling to be effective has to be penetrative. You have to feel it really penetrate your entire being. It, there's a depth to this feeling. It's not a surface feeling. It, it possesses you. It compels you. When you really have found the feeling, that's what it feels like. There's like an emotional frenzy associated with this feeling. When you really feel something, it moves every cell down to the very fiber of your being. And that is the nail of feeling, which nails you to the cross or to this conception of yourself. The mystical union is now consummated and the result will be the birth of a child or the resurrection of a son bearing witness of his father. Consciousness is united to that which it is conscious of being. The world of expression is the child confirming this union. The day you cease to be conscious of being that which you are now conscious of being, that day your child or expression will die and return to the bosom of his father, the faceless, formless awareness. Neville says, the day you cease to be conscious of being that which you are now conscious of being, the expression dies. There's incredible power in our awareness, and our awareness is mediated to the power of our attention. So when we remove our attention from the old state, and we begin to focus it on the new state, the old state dies. The, our attention is our life force energy. And just like a plant, when you uproot a plant, what happens to the plant? It dies. Why? because it has lost its connection to life force energy, the soil, the earth, the grounding, the water, the nutrients, all of that is life force energy. The same can be said for a state of being that we are in, that we wear. When we withdraw our consciousness from it, we are withdrawing our life force energy from it and it dies or passes away. Now this can be used to our benefit or to our detriment. We can choose to ignore the desire that we, that we honestly do desire to express and it will fall away, it'll die. Or we can choose to ignore the problem, that which we don't want to have present in our life anymore. And withdrawing our life force energy from it will starve it, and it also will die. So it is a tremendous power to be used with great responsibility. And when we are mediating this power with wisdom, we'll choo to choose to flow our attention towards the state that we do wish to express. All expressions are the results of such mystical unions. So the priests are correct when they say that true marriages are made in heaven and can only be dissolved in heaven. But let me clarify this statement by telling you that heaven is not a locality, meaning heaven is not a place. Heaven is not a destination. Heaven is actually a state of consciousness. The kingdom of heaven is within you, meaning it can be touched through your state of consciousness. In heaven, which is consciousness, God is touched by that which he is aware of being. Who touched me? For I perceive virtue has gone out of me. The moment this touching, feeling, takes place, there is an offspring or a going out of me into visibility taking place. So this is that discharge. When you work yourself into this emotional frenzy, and you're really feeling deeply, this penetrative feeling that just is connected at the very fiber of your being, all of your cells, you're just really connected to this state of feeling this conception of yourself to be true. There is a virtue that goes out. This is that discharge. It's like an energetic or ethereal orgasm. And that is what is the planting of the seed deep within the subconscious or deep within the father that is going to give birth to the visible outpicturing, which is the child or offspring of the emotional state psychological state, which is the parent state. So the parent state creates the offspring through an impression into consciousness. And that child, or whatever your desire is, taking form and flesh and matter, and then coming and appearing in your world, in the mirror of your world, is the offspring of that impression made upon your awareness in consciousness. The day man feels, I am free, I am wealthy, I am strong, God I am, is touched or crucified by these qualities or virtues. The results of such touching or crucifying will be seen in the birth or resurrection of the qualities felt. For man must have visible confirmation of all that he is conscious of being. 
Now you will know why man or manifestation is always made in the image of God. Your awareness images and outpictures all that you are aware of being. I am the Lord, and beside me there is no God. I am the resurrection and the life. You shall become fixed in the belief that you are that which you desire to be. Before you have any visible proof that you are, you will, from the deep conviction which you have felt fixed within you, know that you are. And so, without waiting for confirmation of your senses, you will cry, It is finished. Such a powerful statement here, and so helpful to everyone who has desired to shed an old state of being and draw unto themselves a new state of being. You become so convicted in this feeling, feeling of your wish fulfilled, the feeling of the desire satisfied, the feeling that I am that which I desire to be now, that even before you get confirmation from the senses, for anything in your world is conveying to you that it's true on the outside, you know for a fact you are so deeply rooted in and convicted in the fact that it is true that you, without any external confirmation, will cry, it is finished. Because you are exercising the power of your own awareness, the power of your own being, and you are free. And you have chosen to crucify yourself upon this feeling, and it is finished. Just as Jesus' words were uttered on the cross, it is finished. So you will also cry, it is finished. Then, with a faith born of the knowledge of this changeless law, a faith born of the knowledge of this changeless law. This is exactly why we do this every single day. This is the knowledge of the changeless law. And by revisiting it every single day, we are becoming born of the faith of this changeless law. Our faith is being born from the knowledge of this changeless law. Neville says, you will be as one dead and entombed. You will be still and unmoved in your conviction and confident that you will resurrect the qualities that you have fixed and are feeling within you. It is hard to overstate the power of these teachings. It is hard to overstate. How, how, do, you, how do you try to conceptualize the importance or the power or the weight of the truth that sets you free? So many have tried to do it for so many countless centuries, and it is as relevant 10,000 years ago as it is today. And it is as relevant today as it will be 10,000 years from now. This is literally the changeless law. The fads of humanity will come and go. Governments will come and go. Countries will come and go. Ideas will come and go. Technologies will come and go. But this truth is the changeless truth. This is the changeless law and will be endlessly relevant. And this truly is the truth that sets us free. And as I say these words, I notice this massive sphere of light peering over my head. What an interesting manifestation. And that's all for this episode of Daily Neville. Imagine wisely, my friends, and I'll see you in the next.